Hello, this is John Baugh, and we're having another exciting adventure here of CIS 1440. We're on week five this time, and we're going to go over arrays, which corresponds to the current uh, Murak book, chapter five, and also the Ducket book, chapter two. The material we'll primarily cover, though, as uh, usual, will come from Murak. So, um, how to create and use arrays. First, we have to kind of establish what is an array. Well, an array is basically a collection of uh, one or more items. Uh, these items are called elements. You can think of an array as an apartment building, and then each of the apartments or units in the apartment building um, can be thought of as a cell of the array. Now, each of the apartments has a, an apartment number, um, those are what we would call in an array the indices, which the singular would be index. So you refer to the entire apartment building, which collects mul uh, contains multiple items at any uh, given location, but then you would also want to make sure that you um, have the ability to access individual components within it. So you refer to the whole name of the apartment building, which might be you know, my apartment or my array or something, and then you use brackets, square brackets, to indicate um, which location within the array you're trying to access. To create an array, you have a couple uh, different options here. Using the new keyword with the array object name. So you say var array name equals new capital A array length. You can also use the brackets literal. So you can say var array name equals and then put brackets. So two ways to create an empty array. Here's an example, var rates equals new array. Um, that just creates the array object and then var names, e var names equals uh, brackets. So that's another way to do it. The syntax for creating an array and assigning values in one statement, you can uh, do them on the same line rather than uh, separate lines. You can, you can also do them on separate lines though. So how to create an array and assign values. You have uh, rates, for example, equals new array, and then you have one, two, three, four elements in the array, and um, these elements will live at index zero, because we start from zero with arrays, so index zero, one, two, and three. Even though there are four elements, the highest uh, index in this array that's valid is three. So the highest index is always one less than the size of the array. So with var names, there are three elements. Um, so that means 0, 1, 2. 2 is the highest uh, valid index. The syntax for referring to an element of an array is the a name of the array, and then in brackets right uh, after it, immediately after it, um, you put the index. So code that refers to the element uh, in the array, you'd have rates at location 2, or index 2. That refers to the third element in the array. That is not a typo, because remember, um, for rates, you have one, two, three, four elements in total, but it starts at zero, zero, one, two. So if we say array at two, that's actually the third element because we're starting from zero uh, with the actual indices. How do you assign rates to an array? So we know how to get the values out. Um, you simply refer to the individual indices. So rates at zero equals 1495. If you pass an integer, uh, to the constructor of the array right here, uh, you know, just the number four or what have you, that'll create an array of that size. What about an array of strings? Um, when you have an array here, this one uses bracket notation, um, you just put equals and then the double quotes around the different strings that you're trying to store in the array. So it's pretty straightforward. There's uh, one property and one operator for an array. The length property tells you how many elements live in the array, and delete allows you to remove or uh, set to undefined a particular element within the array. So it has a different behavior um, than, say, if you're if you know about uh, C++ or language like that, delete doesn't quite do what you might think it does. All it does is it sets to undefined a particular element um, in the um, array. So, um, if I say var numbers equals 1, 2, 3, 4, the array contains 1, 2, 3, 4. Not surprising. If I say numbers at the length location, I say equals 5, that will actually add another element 
uh, to the array automatically. So it won't crash or do anything like that like many languages would. Um, if you go to location 6, um, because the length from before was 4, and we added the element 5, so at the location 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4, we put the value 5. If later you decide you want to add at 6, um, or let's set numbers, for example, to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, this will re, um, this will assign numbers to the array 1, 2, 3, 4, but let's say uh, we know the highest valid index currently is 0, 1, 2, 3, so it's location 3, but if you say just out of, uh, yeah, if you just type numbers at 6, which is way outside the range here, set that equal to 7, it will actually expand the array. So 1, 2, 3, 4, undefined, undefined, and then 7. How do you delete an element at a specific index? You can do so with the delete uh, keyword. So if you start with an array 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you call delete numbers at 2, that will take the element at 0, 1, 2, the 3, and it will set it to undefined. If we want to use a loop to um, fill an array, you can actually do that too. Because remember, with accessing elements of an array, you only need the indices, the specific index at any given point. So for this example, you see that numbers at i equals i plus 1. So basically all they're doing is we're creating um, an array um, using a loop that starts at 0 and goes up to 9 uh, inclusive but 10 exclusive. So that means it will loop 10 times for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's 10 times. Um, but it will actually fill it in with the value of i plus 1. Code that displays the numbers, uh, numbers array created above. So we've got this. We filled it with uh, numbers, 1 through 10, and we want to display it. So for example, let's say we want to display it in an alert. If you say var number string and then make it a, an empty string, then you use the compound uh, addition assignment operator here, plus equals, you're basically appending uh, the numbers array in a space, numbers array at a particular location, or a particular index, and then a space after, after it. So once it goes through this whole loop, then you have a number string. Um, with all the uh, numbers in it, with a space after each one. So if you call alert, it'll show you all the numbers, like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What if we want to do something a little bit more complicated, but not too difficult? Uh, code that gets the sum and the average of an array. So to find the average, we have to find the sum first. Because um, we sum and then we divide by the total uh, size of the array, which is the, the array's length. So in this case, we have four elements inside of our array. We have 141.95, 212.95 at location or index 1, 411 at index 2, and 10.95 at index 3. We use a separate variable called sum and set that equal to 0. So this is just a plain old variable. It's a number. For our totals, on the other hand, totals is an array of uh, number uh, numeric values. So we loop through and we add or um, sum up the totals at each location in this array. Notice we're using the totals.length. The totals.length, remember, is one greater than the actual highest index that you can access. So if the valid indices are 0, 1, 2, 3, the length is actually 4, right? Because there's 1, 2, 3, 4 elements. So we say we want to stay lower than that. So that's why we use less than and not less than or equal to. We start at 0, go up to 1 less ultimately than this length, and then say sum plus equals the totals, which is our array, at location i. So the first time through the loop it will go to totals at 0, which is this one, then it will add in, uh, so sum will contain 141.95 at that point, then it will go to the next iteration of the loop, which will be at i equals 1, so then that will add in the 212.95 next time. It'll add in the 411. And then finally, at the highest valid index, which is 3, it will add in the 10.95. So by that point, we've got our sum. If we create another variable named average, we can say var average equals sum divided by totals.length. That will give us the average value. Um, then if you want to display it, um, you can make a... Uh, 
uh, totals string here. Um, so you can put all the numbers inside of this and then put an alert and then just say, hey, this is the sum um, fixed to two decimal places. And then here's the average. And then they say average dot two fixed uh, two. So ultimately, we can call this two fixed to say I want it to be two decimal places. So it'll print something like this. It'll say our sum is 776.85 and the average is 194.21. So it gives us the mean. There's another type of loop, the for in loop. In some um, languages, we call this an enhanced for loop or a range based for loop. We have to be careful um, with this particular loop because it's not identical to the range based for or the enhanced for loop in other languages. It does still use an index. So we know that um, because we can see the variable name here. Um, but also, if you look at it, they're still accessing the array at a particular index. What this does, though, is it does the automatic bounds checking. You don't have to set, um, you know, some i equals zero and then make sure that the i uh, variable is less than the number's length. This does it automatically. So in some languages, this will actually, this uh, syntax or something similar will actually access the individual elements without an index being considered. But in this case, it's not the same. But this, is, this does make it uh, somewhat easier to deal with arrays sometimes. So you might consider this syntax. So this shows some of the um, differences between for and for in loops. Uh, the for loop, standard for loop, you have to indicate the length and count up. Um, the for in automatically uh, moves through the array. So, the, um, so it's a little more streamlined. Um, also, um, you can see that the uh, for in loop actually skips over any undefined elements, too. That's another uh, thing you need to consider. So there are two undefined elements actually in the array. The for in loop will actually skip over those. So terms that you should be familiar with for this chapter, or this section of the chapter, are array, element, so those are the different things that live in the array. What is the length of the array? It's the number of elements in the array. Index of an array. So the, the indices or individual index are the um, uh, basically kind of like the units in an apartment building if the array is the apartment building. And then you should be familiar with the for in statement and the for in loop. Um, here are some methods of an array object. You've got push, pop, unshift, and shift. Um, push um, adds one or more elements to the end of the array, and it returns the new length of the array. So that's the value it returns. Um, if you don't catch it, it doesn't use it. But let's say names.push, array, and pren, that will add these names to the end of the array. The end of the array, starting Mike and Joel, you have Ray and pren. So if we call pop, that will remove the last uh, element in the array, the element at the end. So if I say remove name equals names.pop, um, it returns that element as well. So remove name will actually contain pren. And also, the array will not contain pren anymore. It'll just say Mike and Joel Ray. If I call the join um, with a separator, uh, if no parameters pass, the method converts all elements in the array to strings and concatenates them separated by commas. So that's the default. To change the separator, you can pass this method as a string literal. Um, so if you want something besides a comma. However, if I say alert names.join, that will actually print out the whole array as a string. What about unshift and shift? So we did push and pop, which um, add and remove elements from the end of the array, respectively. Now unshift and shift. Now unshift actually adds elements and adds them to the beginning of the array. Shift will remove the ele an element from the beginning of the array. So you have to be very careful between the two. Don't get them mixed up. And join, as usual, will print out the elements in the array separated by commas. How do we use the join and toString methods? There's another way to do it. Um, if I call names.join here with our um, array, it will display Mike and Joel Ray, which we expect. If I call join by a comma and a space, it will display Mike, comma, with a space and Joel Ray. Um, if you um, 
call names.toString, that will actually do the same thing as the join method, but without any parameter passed to it. Okay, so that's what we call the string representation of this particular array. Okay, we won't go through the email uh, app example, but I would recommend doing it on your own. And also, uh, extra 5.1 uh, and 5.2, you might end up with, you know, some of these maybe as examples or uh, problems that you'll have to do for your assignment. Okay, so you have a programming assignment coming up, so any of this is a uh, fair game, anything that you've seen thus far. Um, so just be able to uh, do things like this. They might give, they'll give you some base code and some HTML, um, but you'll be expected to fill in the JavaScript to make it work. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to email me, jpbaugh at oaklandcc.edu. Thank you and have a great day.